Well, I bought this old wheel horse uh, years and years ago, and I bought it for parts. And when I brought it home, I put a battery on it and uh, put some gas to it, and it cranked up. I don't remember if it ran smooth or didn't run smooth, but it was sitting in the, the junk lot on a dealer. And uh, I bought it for parts, but I thought, well, if it, it'll fire, maybe there's something I can do with it. But, you know, some of these old garden tractors I've got, uh, they sit unrepaired for years and years and years. It drives my wife crazy. And honestly, it's starting to get under my skin a little bit. Is I need to clear out some of the junk. But I've always considered them like uh, books on a shelf. Good books just haven't been read yet. And somebody on this tractor had busted the rim that fits on that spindle. So it had been taken off and the spindle rusted. I'm not sure that's a, a problem. I just never got around to doing anything to this tractor. I had it under a tarp. and uh, But I want to try to get it going today and if I can, uh, I'll use it. It's a model 520H wheel horse. This was the premium uh, wheel horse garden tractor of the day. Toro had bought a uh, wheel horse and uh, I guess what Toro brought to this tractor other than the, the Toro logo in my mind, the biggest thing was the axle on this tractor is swept forward, so it doesn't come straight out. And so it gives you a tighter turning radius. And they did that to accommodate a 60-inch deck. But I've got a 60-inch, I'm, I'm sorry, I've got a 48-inch deck that I can use on this tractor. And I've got a 42-inch rear discharge deck I could use as well. And missing one of the knobs here, but this is the first time I've looked at this tractor literally in years. It's been under a tarp, but it's a nice uh, sunny day out, and I want to see what I got. So I haven't bothered to do anything to this tractor, like pump up the tires. Or I've got another wheel to put on that side, which again I've had for years. Uh, but you know, before I go to the trouble to air up the tires, I want to I want to see if it'll run. So I got three flat tires and one tire that's missing. But and I want to replace. I got a fuel filter here. I don't know. It's probably cracked. But I, I don't know. I might replace that fuel filter. But I want to see if I can get it to run. So I got the battery in here. Um, it only takes a minute to hook up the battery, but it takes me like an hour to find the screws to hook to hook up to the cables. I've got like uh, ten thousand of these quarter-inch nuts and bolts, and uh, but they're scattered all over. One of these days I'm going to do a video on cleaning out my shop. And uh, it'll be a long play video, probably 24-7. It'll go at least two weeks. Uh, that's how much junk I got in there. So let me hook this battery up. Well, I'm going to replace the fuel line on this tractor. And to do that, uh, I take those screws out, that screw out, that one out and then this is the lock for the brake it's got to come off so I've got a punch to drive that out of course my punch bends when I hit it very hard but it is moving I got the I got the pin out now I just got to get this thing off so I got it off this is a, just a plastic knob, it's for the park brake. And there's the shaft that comes out. So I've had zero luck getting this screw out. And to get this panel off, to get to the gas line where I think it's tied down in here, 
I got to I got to take this panel off, and there were two screws here that were already. I'd already taken this plate off for something else, and then there was uh, one screw uh, right there. So what I'm going to do is drill that thing out. And so, there it is. There's the screw with the hole through the center of it. So hopefully, uh, this panel will just come right out. We'll see. So the, the panel pulled right off. And uh, so here's what I got. So here's the gas line I want to get loose. So I'll cut it there, and there's a little clamp right here. And then I'll go back to the, uh, that goes back to the, this goes back to the fuel tank. So let me get this loose, and we'll see if we can get that gas line out of there. Well, I got the gas line to run through, got it pulled through, and got the old gas line here. And part of the reason it was so difficult to, to pull out is it's just so hard and stiff. And what I did is I took the new gas line and I just taped it to the end of this, this duct tape. And as I pulled the old line out, pulled the new line right through the space where this old line was located. So the problem I have right now is this uh, valve is plugged. And uh, I got a pan here to catch any uh, gas that comes out. And so I'm going to try to stick something up in there and see if I can get it to... Uh, See if I can get gas to come out. So I have a drill bit here and with a little hex shank on it. What I do is kind of run it in that kind of run it in that valve and pull out uh, some of the crud in hopes I can uh, kind of break it loose. So I've progressively used the larger bit and uh, I've drilled in as far as I can go, and I've I got the old I got the new gas line that you know at the ready with the clamp, so if gas started coming out. I could uh, slide that on there, but there's still not gas coming out. So what I'm going to do, in hopes that I don't have to take that valve off, is squirt some. Uh, carb cleaner up in there and see if I can make it break loose so my attempt to uh, clean out the valve uh, failed so I had to pull it out of the tank and, and the way this thing fits up in the tank uh, there's a there's a rubber grommet and there's a little head you can see on that valve and you basically just push this whole thing up in there at one time and it expands around a hole in the opening of the tank and seals. It actually works pretty good. And I think I've got some of these things uh, that I had ordered in the past, but uh, there's a screen. And what I'm gonna do is x the screen and I'll put an inline fuel filter on here and I'll have it I have that uh, fuel filter back here, and uh, so let me see if I can find one of these, and if not, I'll have to order one. So I got on a kick one time. I, my, the first wheel horse I bought was a 314.8, and uh, it was the last of the Kohler engines that had a Kohler Magnum on it, and I still got it. Uh, and as uh, Toro continued to make the wheel horse tractors for a number of years, 
uh, they changed to a, like a Kohler command and and eventually uh, between emissions and safety regulations on the PTO as I'm to understand it they kind of threw in the towel on the garden tractors they came out with the XI series and uh, anyway the long-term prospect for heavy-duty garden tractors apparently wasn't so good with the advent of the zero turn and the ever-present uh, MTD type mowers but I kind of got on a kick and ordered a bunch of spare parts and these rubber grommets for the gas tank was one that was one of the parts that I ordered so I have several of these so I've kind of lucked out on that I guess Well, I got the uh, the grommet in and the valve in the tank, and it was a tight fit. Uh, I had done this before on another wheel horse, and uh, the, the the valve body expands against the part of the grommet that fits up into the tank and pushes it pushes it out against the uh, the ID of the hole, and that's what creates the seal. You can still you know turn it and position it but uh, <clears throat> it's a you gotta you gotta give it a hard push I I thought I was gonna push that valve through my hand so I used a, a glove to get it up there and I also put some uh, Vaseline on it that helped greatly so now I'm gonna hook up the fuel line and uh, see if I can find an inline filter and put back here uh, and then uh, put some gas in here and hook everything back up and see if it'll start. So I left the, uh, took the old fuel filter off and uh, blew it out. Uh, it's, you know, it seems okay. Uh, I'll probably take it out. But, um, and I don't have this fuel line clamped down. And I think as I mentioned, the other ones I don't have clamped down. I just kind of got everything connected here. I want to see if it'll start and run and if we get to that point then I'll start sprucing this thing up and uh, one of the concerns I have is these Onans have a way of uh, letting go of a valve seat and a lot of times on a wheel horse it's the valve right here next to this uh, bulkhead for the steering column. <clears throat> and I, I bought this tractor as I think I mentioned earlier for the front axle and steering I was going to put it on another tractor but I actually started it and uh, drove it off of the uh, trailer when I brought it home and it's just been parked here for years and years and years so what I don't know is why the original owner traded it in and it could have been that you know the valve seat had pulled loose but he traded it uh, at a Cub Cadet dealer and uh, might have been his eyes glazed over with the uh, MTD Cub Cadet uh, yellow and white color scheme I don't know sometimes uh, a lawnmower or a garden tractor gets some bad gas in it and you know people just give up you get to a place like I was on this tractor earlier and uh, you have to uh, pull the the uh, shutoff valve off and out of the tank and put something else in. You know, a lot of homeowners will they'll just kind of give up. So we'll try to start it and see what I got. Alright, so I'm back working on this wheel horse 520H and uh, the wheel that was on this side when I bought this tractor years and years ago but once I figured out it would run <coughs> I uh, decided to try to make a go of it but I've greased up a bearing here and the original wheel that was on this side was crushed it looked like somebody had ran over it with something 
And so years ago, I ordered a couple of wheels, and uh, not for this tractor, but for another one. And I wound up never using them, so they've just been sitting in my basement forever. And uh, so I had to order a castle nut for the end of the uh, spindle. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this wheel on, see if everything fits up. And if it does, then I'm going to try to fire this thing up and uh, back it out of here. All right, I got the, I got the wheel on and I got the battery uh, in place. It's just a little temporary uh, attachment on the wheel. I still got to take it off. I need to go through all those bearings and get a suitable cotter pin for that castle nut. And I got a little starter fluid and I'm hoping there's some juice on this battery and if it'll start then I'll pump up the tires but I'm not, it's getting really hot out here and uh, I'm not gonna go through the motions of pumping up tires it'll just go flat again if I can't get the machine to start so we'll see we have ignition all right so I got the panels back on this tractor I put this panel back on and I put the uh, the lever for the emergency brake and uh, <clears throat> I got this panel back on and I got uh, this one buttoned down and ready to kind of give this thing a, a spin with the mower. I'm going to shoot a little grease on uh, these spindles right here and then we'll be ready to go. So uh, I've kind of mowed in here, I've kind of let this thing cool down a little bit. Mowed down through here and uh, I got uh, I got to trim a little bit with a weed eater, but uh, you know, I think I paid like $200 for this, uh, it might have been $100. And like I said, I bought it for parts, and uh, it fired when I got it home, and I thought, well, you know, I'll just, uh, I might make this thing run one of these days, and so uh, I think I've done that, and it runs great. It's an Onan uh, engine, uh, wheel horse, 520H, and I got a rear discharge deck, uh, which is really nice because you can trim on both sides of it and you don't get anything blasting up against the side of your building or your cars but I like the way these uh, tractors look they're so easy to work on and uh, the engineering on them is is great uh, and I'll do a video on the particulars of the wheel horse but the way you attach the deck you know just little things like you know, the, the grease zerks to the spindle, spindles are on top of the deck. And uh, the shift from forward to reverse on the hydro is just so smooth, just instantly forward and reverse. And uh, so, hope you enjoyed the video, the resurrection of the mighty Wheel Horse 520H. And hit the like button, subscribe. Feel free to comment, and we'll talk to you later.